Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I thank uh, my leader for his comments earlier today, and I think he actually raises exactly the points that Canadians want answers from, from this government and, frankly, from the Conservatives as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to take a moment and say thank you to my colleague, the member from uh, Elwood Transcona, for bringing forward the motion that we're debating today. <laughs> The previous Conservative government and this current Liberal government have shown Canadians that they are no different when it comes to access for the big corporations and well-connected. The level of access to the corridors of power for corporate executives and lobbyists is deeply disturbing. As we know, SNC launched a multi-year lobbying effort to convince the Liberal government to change the criminal code so that when big corporations are charged with white-collar crimes can access plea deals. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Speaker, for SNC, that would mean that they would escape criminal prosecution and the threat of a 10-year ban on government contracts. Mm. This lobbying began as far back as February 2016, and it con has continued ever since. Top officials, senior ministerial staff, ministers themselves, and even the Prime Minister's office were on the hit list. By the end of 2016, their lobbying effort reached the Privy Council Office, the Export Development Canada, Public Services and Procurement Canada, and Public Safety. Then in 2017, it expanded to include Treasury Board, the National Resources and Environment, and Heritage. 21 months later, 51 meetings had occurred. End result, hidden in the 500-page omnibus budget bill in 2018, was the provision that SNC wanted, access to a get-out-of-jail-free card. Effectively, big corporations charged with bribery, fraud, insider trading, and other offenses could all have their charges dropped. What followed after that was all exposed by the former Attorney General. It was plain as day that SNC had tremendous access to the PMO's office and was succeeding in convincing the PMO's office to do its bidding. Had the former Attorney General not had the former Attorney General caved to the pressure from the PMO's office, we may never know about the depth and reach of big corporations like SNC. This episode has confirmed for us what we know in our hearts, that we could never really quite put a finger on it, and that is that big corporations had incredible access, influence, and power over the Canadian government. The power that big corporations wield show us that the people whom the Prime Minister once valued and are part of his elite team are, at the end of the day, expandable. Former Attorney General, gone. Former President of the Treasury Board, gone. Former Clerk of the Privy Council, gone. The Prime Minister's former Principal Secretary, gone. But we also know that it's not just SNC. As it happens, the year that the Liberals launched the Advisory Council on the Implementation of National Pharmacare, big farmers stepped right up and lobbied this government 104 times. And yep, wouldn't you know it, the Liberals is dragging its feet and is failing to implement a national, universal public pharmacare program for all Canadians. It doesn't matter that Canada is the only country with a publicly funded health care system that does not have a national pharmacare plan. It doesn't matter that at least 640 Canadians die every year due to financial barriers that prevent access to medication. In fact, just this past weekend, I met a senior who told me that she's taking her medication every other day. Why? Because she couldn't afford it, Mr. Speaker. And by the way, the parliamentary budget officer estimated that a universal program would result in a $4.2 billion in savings each year. But the government drags its feet, failing to implement a national farmer care plan. Why? 
because big farmer stands to lose. Their wealthy, well-connected lobbyist friends will tell them that it would hurt their pro profit margin, it would reduce their executive bonuses, and it would reduce their stock dividend payouts. That's why, Mr. Speaker. And worth noting is the fact that during this period of intense lobbying, drug costs and profit margins for the top 25 farmer companies in Canada continue to grow. And why stop a big pharma? Let's turn to big oil for a minute. And we also know that despite this government's repeating a million times a day that, quote, the environment and the economy go hand in hand. And the only hand in hand relationship that they care about, frankly, is with big oil. Mm -hmm. They've kept the Harper climate targets. They bought a pipeline. And what did the money go towards? Millions of dollars in executive bonuses. The wealthy and well-connected always have the ear of this government. And let's be real, climate leaders do not buy a 65-year-old leaky pipeline. And as a result of listening to big oil lobbyists for four years, our emissions aren't going down. They are, in fact, going up. And a 12 million ton increase in CO2 emissions last year. Wow. And under current trends, we only we will only reach our weak Paris Agreement reduction targets in 2230. That's 200 years behind schedule. Meanwhile, from coast to coast to coast, Canadians are reeling from the impact of inaction from climate change. Extreme weather conditions, forest fires, floods, droughts, sea level rise, ocean acidification, species at risk. In fact, the IPCC says 1.5 degrees Celsius average rise may put 20 to 30 percent of species at risk in extinction. Young people are demanding action. They are saying, we care, why don't you? Instead of being a climate leader, we have a government that buys a pipeline. The Prime Minister promised to stop subsidizing fossil fuels in 2025. We actually saw the Liberals locking in some fossil fuel subsidies for another 20 years instead. The International Institute for Sustainable Development estimates that $3.3 billion in subsidies is given to oil and gas producers each year. We also have a government that provides $12 million to a multi-million dollar corporation owned by one of the wealthiest families in this country so that they can buy new fridges. And then they tell Canadians this is what climate leadership looks like. Seriously, this is the same multi-billion dollar corporation that recently came clean and admitted that it participated in a bread price, price and a bread price fixing arrangement, ripping off Canadians on a loaf of bread for 15 years. This is the same multi-billion dollar corporation that last year went to, ta to tax courts to fight Canada Revenue Agency over allegations that they've been hoarding cash in an aggressive tax avoidance scheme in Barbados, potentially hiding $400 million in taxes that should have been paid in Canada. Meanwhile, the chairman and CEO of Loblaws is estimated to have have received over six million dollars in total compensation in 2017 alone. Wow. Ripping off Canadians on bread for a decade, hide hundreds of millions in taxes that could go towards Canadian public services, fight the government when you get caught doing it, and still get to show up for a photo op with the Minister of Environment to receive a 12 million dollar check to yeah. buy new fridges. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. This has to stop, Mr. Speaker. I proudly stand today to to support the motion before us, the very least the government can do is to recruit the $12 million of Canadian tax dollars. And Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives are no different from the Liberals. We have seen this play over and over and over again. It is time for us to turn the channel and for a change, to vote for change, and that could happen in October, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> We have time for uh, questions and comments. We have time for a very brief question and comment before we go on to pick up my members. 
Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. And uh, my, my question is related to speech after speech. What we hear from the New Democratic Party is that they will spend hundreds, hundreds of billions, all sorts of money, un an unlimited amount of money. You would think that they would just kind of like uh, click their heels and magic would appear, everyone would be given a house and everything uh, of this nature, Mr. Speaker. My question is related to just how it is that the NDP campaign in the last election, when the former leader said that they would have a balanced budget. Is it the current leadership of the NDP party's uh, position that going forward that the NDP are committed to a balanced budget? Or do they understand what we had understood for many years, that we need to invest in Canada, our economy, and our people? The member for Vancouver East. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm so happy that the member asked this question. Because you know what? If you looked and see what the Liberals did in 2015, and what's happening actually three and a half years later, it's clear as day that their empty promises is never going to be reality. On Pharmacare, Mr. Speaker, we've seen in the Red Book decade after decade after decade, I am growing old watching this same play over and over again. And what happens in this budget? No money for universal Pharmacare. They're going to go and consult once again. They promised Canadians the sky. They sound so nice. They say it with smiles, sunny ways and all of that. They say that they're different from the Conservatives. Let me just say this, Mr. Speaker, Liberal Tories, same old story.